This is KGW News at Sunrise. Oregon is feeling the tragic toll from our historic heat wave. Coming up on Sunrise, dozens of deaths are linked to the high temperatures. And this morning, new fears there could be more. And I think the thing that I'm looking forward to most is just being able to touch people, hang out, dance, live a life, and not be worried about distance anymore. Yeah, some local bars and restaurants got back to it last night, and customers were ready to celebrate reopening. But we also heard from other businesses that told us they plan to go a little slower when it comes to easing restrictions. And KGW has a new podcast for all you true crime fans. I talked to Ashley Korslin about a Vancouver woman's decades-long quest to find her mother's real killer. The trailer for that podcast just dropped and we will show it to you. Former Sunrise anchor Ashley Korslin back on the show later this morning. Not only is this Thursday, Rod Hill, it's the first day of July. It is. What do you got for us? You know, we only hit 79 yesterday. It felt so good. I noticed that. And with the low <laughs> in the mid 60s, it still was uh, six degrees above climate average. Really? Which means we were really crazy before that, right? <laughs> what is the high temperature supposed to be in the valley this time of the year? You make your uh, we're still in the upper 70s for a daytime high right now, 78. But the, the normal lows are in the 50s. And we've been, of course, well up into the 60s, night after night after night, and even warmer. Okay, yes, we'll give you more information on the excessive heat warning that still continues today for areas east of the Cascades. We had thunderstorm activity east of the mountains yesterday. We expect that again today. That means fire danger will be high. We'll get into that coming up. We have cloudy skies, the same low marine deck that never broke. It's still with us this morning. 67 is our current number. I think we'll keep the clouds into afternoon, 73. And then we may or may not lose them today. Yesterday we didn't. We still made it to 79. So I'll put our high today at 80 degrees. Rob, thank you. This morning we are learning the true toll of the record shattering heat wave. Dozens of people died as that temperature soared, most of them right here in Multnomah County. Yeah, KGW's Catherine Cook put together this report for us this morning about the circumstances behind some of these deaths and the lessons we can learn from them. Many feared our heat wave would be deadly, but these numbers are hard to grasp. 63 people across Oregon died from heat related causes. That's according to Oregon State Police. 45 of them were in Multnomah County, nine were in Marion, and five were in Washington County. For comparison, between 2017 and 2019, there were only 12 heat related deaths statewide. Really sobering. Multnomah County Health Officer Dr. Jennifer Vines says those who died in Multnomah County ranged in age from 44 to 97 years old. Many had underlying health conditions. She doesn't know how many were houseless, but says the overwhelming majority died in their homes. So many found uh, without fans, without air conditioning. Um, so these are preliminary numbers. I expect them to, to change. I think there is a chance they could go higher. Leading up to the heat wave, county officials say they did everything they could to prepare. That includes handing out thousands of bottles of water, hundreds of fans, checking on neighbors who might need a cool place to stay, and urging others to do the same. State agencies also coordinated with local authorities to help before and during the heat wave. Multnomah County opened three 24-hour cooling shelters. They're certain that saved lives. I'm like almost choking up thinking about how different that number would have been if we didn't have that open, if we didn't open them all night. Dennis Theralt with the Joint Office of Homeless Services says a thousand people stayed in the county's cooling shelters during the heat wave. For perspective, around 700 people stayed in warming shelters during the metro area's severe winter storm a few years ago. There was a, a gentleman at Arbor Lodge uh, who, who you know, was in St. John's and wondering where he could go. Luckily, there was a place in North Portland for him. He didn't have any other place to go otherwise. And he got to that cooling center. Someone gave him that information and he made it in there. But not everyone did. A statement from Governor Kate Brown's office said in part, even with the immense resources devoted to the effort, it is unacceptable that people died from exposure to excessive heat. We are working with state agencies to gather more details. Vine says Multnomah County is also learning everything they can from this to be better prepared for future severe heat waves, a new reality they can't ignore. Extreme heat does kill people. Um, I think as our summers get warmer, I think we're going to be here again. Uh, I hope not soon. Catherine Cook, KGW News.
Now let's get to three things to know about COVID. Number one, tens of thousands of homeless people nationwide face life on the streets again after being sheltered in hotels during the pandemic. In some cases, hotels want the rooms back as tourists return. Other cities and states have stopped paying for the programs that provided the rooms. FEMA did extend funding through the pro or for the program through September, but the Associated Press reports some local governments say it's hard to apply for the money, so they're passing. Number two, Moderna says its vaccine is very protective against the Delta variant. And last week, Pfizer said the same thing about its shots. The Delta variant is more contagious, and that's leading some health officials to encourage people to keep wearing masks regardless of their vaccine status. And number three, a new CDC report shows vaccine hesitancy is higher in teens and young adults compared to other age groups. Only 38% of people between 18 and 29 have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. That's almost 50% less than people 65 and up. And those are three things to know about COVID right now. Well, Oregon and Washington have dropped most COVID restrictions across both states, and that includes capacity limits for businesses. Yesterday, the governors of each state held celebrations with crowds at Providence Park in Portland and Tacoma Park in Tacoma. Oregon's Health Authority asked the group who gathered there at Providence Park to pause and remember those that did not survive COVID. Let's bow our heads for a moment of silent memory for every Oregonian we've lost to COVID-19. Oregon is no longer requiring masks in public, but individual businesses can still choose to do so. Washington is still requiring anyone who's not vaccinated to wear masks when they're inside public places. We talked to a lot of people who were excited to be out and about in Portland last night as the restrictions eased up. Bars and restaurants there on Northwest 21st were busy. It feels great. I can tell there's definitely like a type of energy throughout the city. Um, everyone's kind of excited and happy. And I think the thing that I'm looking forward to most is just being able to touch people, hang out, dance, live a life, and not be worried about distance anymore. Not every business, though, is handling the reopening the same way. We talked to Raven's Manor Bar in downtown Portland. They say they're still asking customers to wear masks, at least for now. But right now, we're still keeping things kind of the same until we um, get a better idea of how to handle everything. We obviously want to be um, like cognizant that some people still aren't comfortable with taking off the masks and everything. Here's one more element to the reopening story. Some bars and restaurants say it may actually take them a while to get back to 100% capacity simply because they don't have enough staff right now to fully reopen. Sports arenas can also be 100% full again, and that includes Ducks football this fall. No fans were allowed in Autzen Stadium last season. This year, it'll be at full capacity, though. Fans will not have to show proof of vaccination, but those who aren't vaccinated are still asked to wear a mask. There's no separate section for people who are fully vaccinated. Oregon's first home game is September 4th against Fresno State. No word yet about Oregon State Beavers fall schedule. Well, one of Oregon's most beloved amusement parks is also open for business again. The Enchanted Forest just south of Salem returned to its full time schedule yesterday. It almost didn't happen, though. The park's owners endured the pandemic shutdown and historic wildfires that claimed the lives of two family members. Then there was the February ice storm. Yeah, there is no year like this. We knew financially we were in big trouble. That's the biggest problem with running a park like this. It's all the things that could happen. But the park's creator, 91-year-old Roger Tofty, was determined that the park would survive, and it did. The Enchanted Forest will celebrate its 50-year mm. anniversary coming up this August. All right, Rod, uh, still can't believe it. Yesterday, two days after we saw all that record yeah. heat throughout the valley, we didn't yeah. even hit 80 degrees yesterday. Yeah, we, we still have our weather team trying to figure out the difference between a high of 116 and a high of 79. That was yesterday's high temperature in Portland. Going to take some time to do the math on that. All right, let's get you to what is still, unfortunately, a big story, and that is the hot weather east of the Cascades. Uh, now, the good news is here, 
you know, two days ago, Hermiston was 118, yesterday 109. So all these temperatures uh, were backed off from how hot it has been. Bend was 102, they had been 109, the Dow's 93 yesterday. That was a big improvement thanks to a strong west wind. Primeville hit 100 and Baker City hit 100 degrees. The excessive heat warning is still issued and expected to be up for areas east of the Cascades, depending on individual counties through Saturday or Sunday. But it does appear at this point that the worst of the heat for you folks is over, although temperatures will be a little bit hotter tomorrow and into Saturday than what you'll see today. And then also, I apologize for the poor resolution of this map, but everything colored in, uh, which is much of central and eastern Oregon under a red flag warning today for high fire danger. So mainly east of the Cascades, we'll just say PM thunderstorms. We had quite a bit of lightning yesterday. As far as I know, there haven't been two. There haven't been new lightning strikes detected since that Dufer fire that broke out of the one near Dufer yesterday about noon. Uh, gorge winds are still a factor today. West winds gusting to 35 miles per hour. Here are the current numbers. Still warm out east. The Dallas and Pilton at 71, but Portland is at 6. 67 degrees and notice the highs mainly in the 90s east of the Cascades. That's a big boost uh, of improvement, if you will, from what you folks have been seeing. Portland only about 80 today with cloudiness into the afternoon. Tomorrow we get the sun quick 88. We go 92 90 for the weekend and 87 on Monday. Back to you. All right, Rod, we'll have more from Rod coming up here in about eight minutes. But next here on Sunrise, we're going to talk about a brand new true crime pro uh, podcast. True crime podcast. There you go. The KGW is launching. So Brenda had a chance to sit down with Ashley Korsland to hear all about the investigation that was nearly two years in the making. Again, we'll have that here in the next five minutes. Plus, did the World Health Organization actually discourage parents from getting their kids vaccinated? Our Verify team looks into the claim right after the break.